Hello everyone. I'm Krishna, practicing endodontist and restorative dentist from Raipur. So today I'm here with you to share a simple, economical, yet very effective tip, which is a reinforcement and a pre endo buildup of grossly mutilated teeth. So we all know the importance of having all the four walls while doing a root canal treatment. So for this, the pre endo buildup is done whenever a wall is missing with either a direct composite or even for that matter with a temporary materials like either a glass enamel or even a liquid app. Because nowadays we are more into a single visit endodontics where we want to do cleaning and shaping and obturation in the same visit. So not to waste much of the time, we can do it with even either a liquid arm and finish off in the single visit and do a post endo restoration in the same visit. But what about these cases when we have a grossly decayed tooth where many of the walls were missing and even the decay is subgingival? In such cases, not only just the pre endo buildup, but even a reinforcement is equally important. Because many times these patients uh, present to us with either intraoral abscess or even the periapical lesions. So wherein we are going to do uh, multiple visits. So in, during the treatment, we don't want the tooth to break. And even while doing the rubber dam isolation, we don't want the teeth to break. So apart from this, of course, with the pre endo buildup, what all the benefits we have, like having all the four walls and having the reservoir for the irrigant and having a definitive points for the uh, working length stoppers. So all these are also very important. And apart from this, even during intracanal medicament phase that, you know, we don't, we want the uh, canals. I mean, if we don't want any coronal leakage and the leaking of the calcium hydroxide from the canals. So pre endo buildup along with the reinforcement is equally important for these grossly mutilated teeth. So let us see how we can do it effectively, economically in a very simple manner. So here is a canine tooth which is badly mutilated. In this, all the caries excavation was done. And of course, these teeth, when we do the caries excavation, automatically the orifices get open. So here, uh, the etching and then the bonding protocols were done and thereafter the matrix adaptation. And uh, just, you know, once the orifice is felt, only the orifice enlargement was done up to three to four millimeters without doing the complete canal shaping. Now in this enlarged orifice, the gutta pacha is placed in it. And since we don't want any gaps there because the canals are not round always, we don't want any gaps. So this gutta pacha is wrapped with a Teflon tape and packed inside the orifice. Now we have a completely sealed orifice. Now the composite buildup has been done. In this case, we have even reduced the length of the gutta pacha so that we have a, a sufficient work, easy working space. And here the composite buildup has been done. And thereafter, just, you know, you have to do the lateral movements and then pull out the gutta pacha. It comes out easily along with the Teflon tape. Now we have a patent canal in which we do the working length determination and we have a standard reference points also because we have built the tooth. And in the same visit, the obturation has been done. This tooth had almost 31 millimeters of the working length. And the next visit was appointed for the post end core. This patient did not want to go for the gingivectomy and post end core and all that procedure. But the patient did not report for two years because of the corona times. And when he came still, the tooth was saved because we have reinforced the tooth with the previous pre endo buildup. Otherwise, if you'd have left it with just a temporary restoration, either the tooth would have break or even there would have been a leakage. So after two years, the post and core was done and the core buildup was done with the uh, direct composite. Now coming to the second clinical situation, but this case is also very common where we have a deep cervical abrasion and uh, class five cavity. Here you can see that, you know, the root caries, subgingival caries. So patient did not want extraction because already she got two molars removed in that quadrant. 
And here, a quick pre endo buildup was done with a temporary cement. I suspected something fishy over here. And when I was trying to locate the canals, I could not get that mesobuckle canal. So again, the isolation was removed from here and uh, the deep margin acquisition was done and located the canal. Can you see where the orifice is? It is on the root structure, extremely outer surface. So in such cases, when we try to do the pre and build buildup, it is very difficult and we may block even the orifices also. So other canals were, uh, so in this one uh, felt the orifice, just the three to four millimeters of the orifice scouting was done and orifice enlargement was done with the Protepa Gold SX and that is blocked with the 6% or even non-standardized GP, it can be blocked. And the remaining canals were sealed with the, coated with the Teflon tape so that we don't block them with the uh, mid restorative material. And here the free, uh, freehand uh, composite buildup was done. This is how it is. And the gutta pacha was removed from the orifice. So you can see the patent orifice and the canal without blocking the with the restorative material. Now we have all the four walls. Here the cleaning and shaping has been <clears throat> for that uh, mesobuckle canal. And we have all the four walls for the irrigant activation also. This was again a uh, apical abscess case. So here intracanal medicament was placed and then the obturation was done and the post or restoration. This is how it is after completing the case. <clears throat> Now here is a condition where again a class five cavity in a premolar, when you do the caries excavation, many times the orifice gets, uh, the canal gets open. So in such cases, it is very difficult to do the pre endo buildup even with a liquid am also without blocking the orifices or without blocking the canal. But at the same time, it is very important for us to uh, block this area. So in such cases, again, uh, deep margin acquisition was done. And thereafter, again, the orifice area, just three to four millimeters was enlarged without enlarging, without shaping the entire canal. And here the paper point was used, which was uh, coated with the, wrapped with the Teflon tape. And it is blocking that second picture, you can see it is blocking that enlarged area. And the third picture, the direct composite uh, reinforcement and the pre endo buildup was done. So now we have all the four walls. And in the same visit here, the cleaning and shaping and the obturation was done. And the coronal orifice, uh, the access cavity area was sealed with the temporary cement. And after seven days, the patient was called. And the last picture you can see, the day when the patient came for the direct composite post and restoration on the occlusal surface. Here is a healing gingiva. Now the patient came after two years for other treatments like uh, for the first molar, and for the second premolar, now you can see the intact restoration and the gingival margin at the end of the two years of the follow-up. So in a nutshell, the steps are, if you can achieve the rubber dam isolation, either with the brinker clamps or with the tiger clamps, but most importantly, without fracturing the remaining tooth structure, because in such badly mutilated teeth, the remaining tooth structure is very weak. If it is possible for us to go ahead with the rubber dam isolation, and deep margin acquisition is uh, most of the times it is needed in such cases because the caries is subgingival. Once it is done, isolate the margins with the Teflon tape, then the complete caries excavation, and then scouting of locate the orifice, and then the scouting of the orifice with the hand files, maybe 15, 20 number, and then the only the orifice enlargement with the rotary like SX, uh, only up to three to four millimeters we do. Now we do the matrix band adaptation if it is possible. Try out whichever is possible, maybe a tofilmir or the rail matrix if you have, or matrix in matrix or ortho band, etc. Whatever, if it is possible, try it out. And then etching and then the bonding protocols. Thereafter, the greater taper GP, either just the GP if it is able to seal the complete orifice uh, without leaving any open areas, if it is not possible with just the GP, then wrap it with a Teflon tape or even a paper point wrapped with a Teflon tape to seal the orifice completely. Then you can cut the length because we are not going completely into the working length. So it is very long, which may interfere with our working. So cut the length for a, working, for a comfortable working space. 
then protect the other orifices with the Teflon. If you are not doing this canal projection for all the canals, then protect them so that our restorative material will not block them. Then the composite buildup is done. Then pull out the GP slowly with slight lateral movements. And if you have not done the rubber dam isolation in the beginning, now to do the rubber dam isolation and uh, then to continue with complete working line determination, cleaning and shaping, and either intracanal medicament or obturation, whatever is needed in that case. So thank you for your patient here. I think this is a small tip is helpful for you in long run. And uh, I thank Endo Haveli team for inviting me for uh, sharing my this tip.